Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So last few more problems are left on ratio analysis. So far I have completed 16 main problems and 14 short problems on ratio analysis. So if you are regularly watching, definitely you will be in a position to uh, get a good command on this topic of ratio analysis. Otherwise, if you have not, uh, I mean, watched the first four videos, it every problem will be a difficult problem for you. So I suggest if you have not watched the earlier <clears throat> videos, go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject financial decision making, select the videos of ratio analysis, watch the first four videos on complete theory. Get a good command on the concept of ratios, users, advantages, limitations, classification, and then what are the different formulas in ratio analysis, their significance. All these things I have explained in the first four videos. So then only you will get the complete command. All the problems are based on the formulae and their significance. That's what you have to remember. Now, last few problems are reverse back problems, where ratios are given. And by using those ratios, we have to prepare the balance sheet. So <clears throat> before starting the 17th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take the screenshot of the solution of 17th problem, then I'll explain. Come on, see the 17th one. From the following information, prepare the balance sheet with as many details as possible. Gross profit is given rupees 80,000 and gross profit to cost of goods sold is 1 by 3. The ratio is GP by COGS, 1 by 3. Account receivable velocity is 72 days and year consists of 360 days. For our calculation purpose, we take year to consist of 360 days. Stock velocity 6 times, opening stock 36,000, bills receivable 20,000, accounts payable velocity 90 days, fixed assets turnover ratio 8 times, bills payable 5,000, current assets 1,40,000. That's all. So one by one will make use. First of all, gross profit is given and GP to sales ratio is given. By using these two information, we can find out how much are the sales and how much are the cost of goods sold. Sales and COGS we can find out by using this GP, gross profit. Now see carefully how we proceed. Gross profit is given 80,000 and GP, gross profit to cost of goods sold ratio is given 1 by 3. The formula for this is GP by COGS is equal to 1 by 3. And GP is given in the problem 80,000. In place of GP, 80,000 divided by COGS is equal to 1 by 3. Now make a cross multiply multiplication. COGS into 1 is COGS. 80,000 into 3 is 2,40,000. So COGS is equal to 2,40,000. We got the COGS. We are having GP, we are having COGS. We can find out the sales. Sales is equal to COGS plus gross profit. Cost of goods sold plus gross profit, you will get the sales. So 2,40,000 plus 80,000, 3,20,000 is the sales. So by using this GP, we have calculated COGS as well as sales. Now we'll make use account receivable velocity. So account will receivable velocity is given as 72 days. But we don't require days, we want times. So year consists of how many days given in the problem? 360 days. So we can convert account receivable turnover ratio is equal to 360 by 72. You will get 5 times. Account receivable turnover ratio is 5 times. The formula for accounts receivable turnover ratio. Net credit sales divided by average account receivables. Right? But due to lack of information, we simply take sales. We don't have cash sale, credit sale. So instead of net credit sales, we take sales. Divide by average receivables. We cannot take, we cannot calculate average receivable because opening receivables are not given. So we take closing receivables. So account uh, sales are three lakh twenty thousand divided by account receivable is equal to five. Now cross multiply five AR is equal to three lakh twenty thousand. 
AR is equal to 320 by 5, you will get 64,000. So closing account receivable is 64,000. And when information is given, bills receivable. Remember in this formula, when we say account receivable, it should include bills receivable. Bills receivable are included in account receivable. So total account receivable 64,000 and bills receivable 20,000. So net account receivable is 44,000. But for balance sheet purpose, there is no need to segregate bills receivable. Bills receivable and account receivable combined together. So in balance sheet, we take account receivable 64,000, not 44,000. For your information, I'm showing this. Stock velocity. The stock velocity is given six times. The formula for stock turnover ratio, COGS divided by average stock. COGS we have calculated 2,40,000. So 2,40,000 divided by average stock 6, cross multiplication, 6 average stock is equal to 2,40,000. Average stock 240 by 6, 40,000. Average stock. But opening stock is given in the problem 36,000. So what is the formula for average stock? Opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. Average stock is equal to opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. Average stock 40,000. Opening stock given in the problem 36,000. Closing stock we don't have. Divide by 2. Now cross multiply 36,000 plus closing stock is equal to 40,000 into 2, 80,000. Now closing stock is equal to 80,000. This plus will become minus 36. So closing stock we got 44,000. So so far with the help of given information we have calculated COG, sales, account receivable and closing stock. The next ratio is accounts payable velocity accounts payable velocity is given 90 days but we don't require days we want in times so how many days in a year 360 days for our calculation given in the problem so accounts payable turnover ratio is equal to 360 by 94 times so what is the formula for accounts payable turnover ratio net credit purchases divided by average account payable that is the formula Simply lack of information instead of credit purchase, we take only purchase and denominator average creditors we cannot calculate, so we'll take the closing accounts payable. Right? The purchases we don't have by using this COGS, we can find out purchases just like the previous problem. COGS is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. That's the formula for cost of goods sold. So here COGS 2,40,000. Opening stock 36,000 already given in the problem plus purchases minus closing stock closing stock just now you have calculated 44,000 Now take the variables values on the left hand side and keep purchases on RHS So 2,40,000 minus 36,000 plus 44,000 is equal to purchase the so purchase we got 2,48,000 Now we substitute Purchases in place of purchase 2,48,000 divided by closing accounts payable is equal to 4. Now cross multiply 4 accounts payable is equal to 2,48,000. So accounts payable 248 divided by 4 62,000. So total accounts payable is 62,000. But remember this accounts payable includes bills payable also. In the problem bills payable is given. So Accounts payable, closing accounts payable 62,000 minus bills payable 5,000, accounts payable 57,000. So we have accounts payable and bills payable separately if we keep, then accounts payable will be 57, bills payable will be 5,000. But for our balance sheet purpose, we add up both accounts payable and trade pay, uh, uh, bills payable and accounts payable, both will add up. So total accounts payable 62,000 will show it in the balance sheet. Next current assets are given 1,40,000. Already we know normally current assets consist of three items. Inventories, account receivable and cash and cash equivalent. These three items are included in current asset. So here current asset is given 1,40,000. So in place of CA 1,40,000 account receivable just now you have calculated here 64,000. Inventory, we have calculated closing stock 44,000 plus cash and cash equivalent. Now bring these values to the left hand side. Plus 64 will become minus 64 plus 44 will become minus 4. 
तो कैश इज थर्टी टू थाउजेंड लास्ट वन फिक्सड असेट्स टर्न ओवर रेशो इज एट द फॉर्मुला इज सेल्स डिवाइडेड बाई फिक्स असेट्स सेल्स ऑलरेडी वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड हियर थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड तो थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाई एफ ए इज इक्वल टू एट क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई एट एफ ए थ्री लैख ट्वेंटी एफ ए थ्री ट्वेंटी बाई एट फोर्टी थाउजेंड फिक्सड असेट फोर्टी थाउजेंड दैट्स what the more information is given in the problem we have used the information we have calculated all the values now we have to finally prepare the balance sheet so this is the balance sheet equity and liability shareholders fund share capital remember share capital no not no i mean no information is given regarding share capital in the whole problem so we will take the share capital as the balancing figure if anything is missing in the problem we can take it as balance sheet figure so in our problem everything is given except share capital so share capital we do take it as balancing figure so after computing all the values we come to know how much would be the share capital now non current liabilities are not there current liability only one trade payable total trade payable 62000 which includes bills payable also next comes to asset side fixed assets just now we have calculated 40000 now current assets we have inventory trade receivable account receivable and cash and cash equivalent inventory 44000 here then account receivable 64000 this 64000 includes bills receivable and cash and cash equivalent 32000 asset side all the values are given fixed assets and current assets so take the total of the asset side 180000 but liability side only one item is given that is accounts payable we don't have share capital so balance sheet total 180000 minus 62000 you will get 118000 as the balancing figure which is not given in the problem and that 118000 is the share capital that's all this is the end of problem number 17 Come on. Now I am going to start the last and final problem, problem number eighteen. See the eighteenth problem carefully. From the following particulars, draw up the balance sheet of the company. Current ratio two point five, uh, quick ratio one point five, net to working capital thirty thousand. So by using this net to working capital, current ratio, and quick ratio, we can find out current assets, current liabilities, and the stock. these three items we can easily calculate by using current ratio quick ratio and working capital then stock turnover ratio is six times but the formula is also given cost of sales by closing stock then gross profit ratio 20% fixed assets turnover ratio on cost of sales two times debt of turnover ratio two months fixed assets to shareholders net worth 0.8 reserves and surplus to capital 0.5 so again one by one ratio we have to make use and calculate the values then prepare the balance sheet take the screenshot of the solution of this 18th problem then i'll explain all the points in detail come on first of all net working capital the net working capital given in the problem 30000 then net working capital the formula for working capital is ca minus cl current asset minus current liability so in place of working capital ca minus cl is equal to 30000 keep ca on lhs and take the cl to rhs so minus cl will become plus cl so we got an equation current asset is equal to 30000 plus current liabilities we got an equation now we substitute this in the current ratio formula current ratio is 2.5 the formula for current ratio ca by cl is equal to 2.5 in place of ca i can substitute 30000 plus cl divide by cl is equal to 2.5 now cross multiplication if i make 2.5 into cl is 2.5 cl 30000 plus cl into 1 is 30000 plus cl now take this cl to lhs so my plus cl will become minus cl so 2.5 cl minus cl is equal to 30000 so 2.5 minus 1 
बिकॉज सी एल मीन्स वन सी एल तो टू पॉइंट फाइव माइनस वन इज वन पॉइंट फाइव सी एल थर्टी थाउजेंड सी एल इज इक्वल टू थर्टी थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाई वन पॉइंट फाइव यूल गेट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड करंट लाइब्रेटी तो वन आइटम वी गॉट नाउ सब्सटीट्यूट द वैल्यू ऑफ करंट लाइब्रेटी इन द इक्वेशन वील गेट द करंट असेट्स सी ए इज इक्वल टू थर्टी थाउजेंड प्लस सी एल सी एल वी गॉट ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड तो फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करंट असेट तो वी गॉट द करंट लाइब्रेटी वी गॉट द करंट असेट्स नाउ नेक्स्ट रेशो इज क्विक रेशो In the problem, quick ratio is given 1.5. The formula for quick ratio: quick asset by current liability, Q A by C L. C L already we got 20,000. So Q A by 20,000 1.5. Cross multiply Q A is equal to 20,000 into 1.5, 30,000. We got the quick assets as 30,000. We know the formula for quick assets. Quick asset is equal to current asset minus stock minus prepaid expenses. We assume there are no prepaid expenses. So quick asset is equal to current asset minus stock. So quick asset already we got it. Or else you take the stock to LHS minus stock will become plus stock, right? So C A minus Q A. Stock is equal to C A minus Q A. So current asset we got fifty thousand and quick asset we got thirty thousand. So fifty minus thirty twenty thousand closing stock we got. So I told you, by using the working capital, current ratio, and quick ratio, we can calculate current assets, current liability, and stock. That's it. Next is stock turnover ratio is equal to six given in the problem. The formula for stock turnover ratio is COGS divided by average stock. But we'll take the closing stock as mentioned in the problem. So COGS divided by stock. Stock is twenty thousand. So COGS by twenty thousand is equal to six. Cross multiply COGS twenty thousand into six one lakh twenty thousand. We got cost of goods sold one lakh twenty thousand. Next ratio given in the problem is gross profit ratio twenty percent. <clears throat> gross profit is twenty percent of sales. If the sales are hundred, gross profit will be twenty. I have put one equation when sales are hundred, gross profit will be twenty. And sales minus gross profit, you will get COGS. COGS will be eighty. Hundred minus twenty is eighty. So we got an equation. If sales are hundred, GP is twenty, COGS is eighty. But what is our actual COGS? One lakh twenty thousand. When COGS is one lakh twenty thousand, how much would be the sales? So one lakh twenty thousand divided by eighty into hundred, one lakh fifty thousand. That's it. So we got the value sales one lakh fifty thousand. Now fixed assets turnover ratio. Normally fixed assets turnover ratio formula is sales by fixed asset. But in this problem specifically it is given don't take sales take COGS. So I am taking COGS by fixed assets is equal to two. COGS one lakh twenty thousand divided by FA is equal to two cross multiply two FA is equal to one twenty FA is equal to sixty thousand. We got fixed asset sixty thousand. Now debtors turnover ratio is two months. Two months is given, but we want times. So how many months are there? Twelve months in a year. So twelve divided by two six times. So debtors turnover ratio is six times. The formula for debtors turnover ratio: net credit sales divided by average debtors. This is the original formula for debtors turnover ratio. But due to lack of information, simply we take sales by closing debtors. So sales by debtors is equal to six. Sales, how much we got? One lakh fifty thousand divided by debtors is equal to six. Now cross multiply six debtors one lakh fifty debtors one fifty by six twenty five thousand. We got debtors account receivable is twenty five thousand. Now fixed assets to shareholders net worth is pointed given in the problem. The formula is fixed assets divided by net worth, shareholders' net worth, or simply you call it as net worth. Point eight. Now fixed assets already we got it here sixty thousand. So sixty thousand divided by net worth point eight. Cross multiply point eight net worth is equal to sixty thousand. Net worth is equal to sixty thousand divided by point eight seventy five thousand. We got net worth as seventy five thousand. And remember net worth means. Share capital plus reserves and surplus. That is the meaning of the term net worth. 
the last and final ratio given in the problem is reserves and surplus to capital is 0.5 reserves and surplus to capital is equal to 0.5 the formula will be reserves and surplus divided by capital because to capital is given is equal to 0.5 if i put by one nothing will happen now what do you observe from this one if capital is one <coughs> then reserves and surplus will be 0.5 <coughs> if capital is one reserves and surplus will be 0.5 so let capital is equal to one rupee reserves and surplus will be 0 0.5 the net worth will be 1.5 because net worth means share capital plus reserves and surplus 1 rupee share capital 50 paisa reserves and surplus 1.5 is the net worth so when net worth is 1.5 capital is 1 and reserves and surplus is 0.5 according to this information what is our actual net worth 75,000 when net worth is 75,000, how much would be the capital? How much is the reserves? So here, 75,000 divided by 1.5 into 1 is equal to 50,000 capital. 75,000 divided by 1.5 into 0.5, you will get 25,000. This is the reserve. So we have bifurcated the net worth into share capital and reserves. Out of 75,000, 50,000 are share capital and 25,000 are reserves and surplus according to this ratio that's it so we have computed all <coughs> now we'll prepare the balance sheet so balance sheet equity and liability shareholder fund share capital just now we have calculated 50,000 reserves and surplus we have calculated 25,000 long-term debt we don't have long-term debt mentioned anywhere in the problem but we'll keep it aside if there is a balancing figure we'll take it then current liability only one is that trade payable Creditors, we have calculated creditors somewhere here. Creditors, where are the creditors we have calculated here? No, current liability. Current liability we got here, current liability 20,000. Nothing is mentioned regarding trade payable. So whatever current liability is there, that is assumed as trade payable or accounts payable. So trade payable, creditors 20,000, current liability. Now come to asset side, fixed assets. We have already calculated fixed assets uh, 60,000. Then current assets. Normally current assets will consist of three items. That is inventory, receivables and cash. In our problem, total current assets are 50,000. 50,000 current assets. How much is our inventory? 20,000. How much are debtors? Here somewhere debtors we have calculated here. Debtors 25,000. So out of 50,000 current asset, 20,000 is the stock inventory and 25,000 is the trade receivable and nothing is mentioned regarding cash. The balancing figure cash. 50,000 minus 20,000 minus 25,000. 5,000 rupees is the cash and cash equivalent. So asset side, we have complete information. Fixed asset 60,000 and this current assets 50,000. So 60 plus 50, 1 lakh 10,000 is the total of asset side. Same 1 lakh 20,000 we take it in the laboratory side. But laboratory side, we have only 75 plus 20, 95,000 we have. Only 95,000 value we have on the laboratory side. The shortage is 15,000. 1 lakh 10,000 minus 95,000. 15,000 is the balancing figure. So what is the missing figure? long-term debt long-term debt balancing figure 15,000 now your balance sheet is complete that's it this is the 18th problem and the last and final problem I have explained two more problems are there that you can do it as your practice so totally 14 short problems and 18 main problems I have explained in detail regarding each and every ratio hope my regular viewers have already understood so many, I mean, ratios, formally, what I have explained. I have put my 100% effort in explaining each and every point. So if you are satisfied with my lecture, give a like to the video, share my channel in a group, in your friend circle, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Give your comments from which university you are pursuing your course and what you are doing, from where you are. Give this information. It gives me more motivation that students are following me. 
So I have to give my 100% to you. So inshallah next video I will start the next topic in this subject of financial decision making. The next topic is financial management. That will take away inshallah in the next class. All the best.